Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So 37-year-old Maryland resident and Proud Boys member Scott Miller held a leadership position within the group. And it gave him, according to the uh, prosecutor, quote, authority during meetings, events, and rallies, including the authority to issue what they called, quote, gear up orders. And members of his encrypted group chat talked explicitly of violence. They talked of using guns, taking out the police, and this was in the days leading up to the Capitol attack. So on January 6th, Miller was seen on the Capitol grounds. He was wearing gloves that had reinforced plastic knuckles. He also had on ski goggles. And the prosecutor said it looked as if he was wearing body armor or some sort of plated vest uh, because his jacket was unnaturally bulky. So Miller headed to the Lower West Terrace Tunnel, and this was shortly after he arrived at the Capitol, and he immediately started to push against other members of the mob in the tunnel to apply pressure to the police. So a short time later, the police were able to push everyone to the mouth of the tunnel, and they were still standing guard, of course, but um, that's when Miller picked up a long pole off the ground and he charged at them. And he was seen on video, he was swinging the pole at the police, he swung it numerous times, and he struck a female officer in her head and her body and her helmet. He then fell back into the crowd for a few minutes, then he approached the tunnel again, and he was throwing several items at the police at that point. So he chucked a stick at them, a bottle, a large speaker, and some sort of piece of clothing, it looked like. And then he found another long pole on the ground and he picked that up and he started jabbing at the officers and striking them with it. So the prosecutor said Miller was seen striking at least two officers with that second pole and he hit them in their helmets and their heads at least seven times. Several minutes after that, Miller charged at the police again and along with other members of the mob, he was able to rip a riot shield out of an officer's hands. Miller then handed it back to the mob, and he was also seen repeatedly striking a window that was nearby the tunnel. He had some sort of object, they said, or a tool in his hand. He struck the, the window. So Miller left the Capitol grounds sometime after that. And then later that night, a member of his encrypted chat told the group that they were going to be, quote, nuking this group tomorrow, and they were going to create a new group chat. And then the member explained that they were, quote, scrubbing our records. So law enforcement conducted a search of Miller's home in December of 2022, and they found the gloves that he was wearing at the Capitol. They also found four guns, hundreds of rounds of ammunition, a tactical vest with armor plates um, for that vest. So most likely the one he was wearing and then a blueprint for the assembly of an assault rifle. And then they also found Proud Boys items and Nazi items, including a patch that had an SS slogan on it from the Hitler regime. In addition, they found something that explains that Nazi memorabilia. Miller had a blue shirt in his closet that contained a badge and a Minneapolis police patch. And then there was a name tag on it that said Chauvin. And they found a photo of Miller wearing that shirt as a Halloween costume, and he was kneeling down on one knee. So obviously a reference to that horrific murder of George Floyd when Officer Derek Chauvin was kneeling on his neck for nine minutes and killed him. Um, but, you know, the Proud Boys aren't proud bigots, right? Right? Yeah. If you're still out there spewing that BS... Just walk a wide circle around me. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I can put up with a lot. I can keep my mouth shut on a lot. Bigotry is not on that list. There's more. When they searched Miller's devices, the authorities found, quote, memes and images promoting racially motivated violence. 
One photograph, they said, shows Miller posing and smiling next to a news story describing the drowning of migrants. And he had internet searches for Jewish-owned stores in Washington, D.C. And then they found notes on his phone that he had written expressing his belief that the election was stolen, quote, to perpetuate the mounting disenfranchisement and humiliation of America's white majority. In another note, he said, quote, only the National Justice Party has the will to break this corrupt cabal once and for all. We are mobilizing the toughest, most resilient, and most politically savvy elements of white America in order to wage a real struggle for our country and for our birthright. The sham of this election is the wake-up call to all decent white Americans to the ex existential peril we face, to the ruthless and malevolent nature of the system, and the need to put aside all fear and hesitation in the fight for our future. How do you live 37 years on this planet and, number one, not know that white people stole this country from Native Americans. Not your birthright. And second, how after 37 years do you still have so little going for you that the color of someone's skin, their nationality, their religion, makes you completely insecure and feel victimized when white men are literally at the top of the food chain and have been for all time? You seriously have nothing to be proud of other than your white skin? How pathetic. Get a life. Grow the fuck up. And I found some things in his sentencing memo which proves my point and, and what crybabies these privileged jackasses are. According to the prosecutor, Miller had a supportive family. He had a good education. One of his employers, though, described him as a, quote, mediocre worker who complained a lot, but missed quite a bit of time. Another employer fired Miller because he was constantly late. And Miller left another job because he had, quote unquote, issues with a coworker. So Miller was arrested on December 16th of 2022, and he was charged with civil disorder, two counts of assaulting officers with a dangerous weapon, theft of government property, entering a restricted building or grounds with a de deadly or dangerous weapon, disorderly conduct in a restricted building or grounds with a deadly or dangerous weapon, two counts of physical violence, one of which also included that deadly or dangerous weapon enhancement, and impeding passage on Capitol grounds. In January of 2024, Miller pleaded guilty to assaulting officers with a dangerous weapon, so he faced up to 20 years in prison, three years of probation, and 250000 in fines. However, the prosecutor requested 71 months in prison, three years of probation, and 2000 in restitution. Should have been more, should have been more, but surprisingly, the prosecutor mentioned that he had only one previous arrest. It was in 2019. He was arrested for disorderly conduct, disturbing the peace, and assault at a drag queen story hour. But Miller tried to backpedal at his sentencing hearing. He apologized for assaulting officers and he claimed that he's reforming himself. That's his word. Um, and he said, quote, I recognize now that l that line of thinking leads people down a bad path. He also told the judge, quote, I am not a violent or hateful person, despite some of the things you've seen. <laughs> okay, uh, so U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin presided over Miller's case, and I have to say, I, I can only imagine how he felt sitting there being judged and sentenced by a black woman. <laughs> you have to love karma. So Judge Chutkin wasn't really moved by his so-called reformation. She reminded Miller that he went straight to the tunnel when he got to the Capitol and, quote, the whole time you were fighting. 
And then the judge also praised the police on for January 6th. She said, quote, they faced horrendous circumstances. They were assaulted, spat on, beaten, kicked, gassed. They are patriots. And then Judge Shutkin added, quote, it can happen again. Extremism is alive and well in this country. Threats of violence continue unabated. And in regard to his 2019 arrest, she said, quote, I see from your actions that you have a tendency to jump in and cause trouble. And evidently, Miller is either expecting his first child or he just had his first child. But the judge did acknowledge this was going to be a hardship on his wife and his child, who she said, quote, didn't ask for any of this. And then she told Miller that she hoped having a child would help get him on the right track. In the end, though, she handed down her longest sentence yet. Miller was sentenced to five and a half years in prison, three years of probation, and 2,000 in restitution. And he's been out this whole time. He has been on home detention, but he hasn't been in jail. So he's going to miss the first five years of his child's life. All because he believed a lie perpetrated by Donald Trump and his stooges. So I just hope that this guy can be proud of his child so he can stop hating everyone else. That's my hope. Anyway, I will let you all know if I hear any more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share, and subscribe. Please donate if you can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon. <music>